Hey everyone and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video for you today. Once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Puzzler. With over 30 years of reselling experience, I've been doing eBay since the mid 90s and have a lot of experience under my belt so if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about something new definitely go down there click the subscribe button if you're if you're uh, a previous uh, subscriber if you're subscribed definitely i really appreciate your uh, support most definitely and you know leave a comment below if you're watching this video on the back end your comments help the algorithm the likes are also uh, appreciated for sure we're trying to reach 10,000 subscribers we're pretty close so if you're not subscribed Definitely go down there, click the subscribe button, help out with the with the whole thing, and uh, we're very excited. And now it looks like it appears to be live. <laughs> I actually did five minutes of this show and uh, was wondering why no one was in the chat room, and then I realized that I wasn't live, so it's actually pretty crazy. But we're here, and like I said, if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about eBay stuff, what to sell, bolos, you want to take a deep dive into certain items you definitely want to go down there and click the subscribe button we're gonna have a little bit of we're gonna have a deep dive on two items so you want to stay tuned today and check out all of that stuff for sure so uh the first item is this antique sterling silver dresser set this is from our blackington and company now this is a turn of the century set um i want to say anywhere between the 1900s and 1920s is when this was produced uh, traditionally they come in sterling silver as these ones also do and you can usually tell uh, when you see these things right off the bat whether or not they're plated or not but watch out for that because some of these are plated uh, if it says sterling it's a pretty good sign that it's going to be solid sterling if not rolled sterling and as you can see here the mark says R&B and company and I actually had to go to a Facebook group to uh, try to determine what company this was um and all that kind of stuff so you know usually traditionally uh, british great britain sterling will have marks like symbols like the lion is basically like instead of putting sterling uh, as traditionally here in the united states it would be stamped with a lion or a crown i think in some cases so just be very careful uh, to kind of do your research if you ever come across this kind of stuff because uh, you never know uh, what you're going to have. And we got Maui Delights and Jeffrey D in the house. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, great to, that you're here. I appreciate it for sure. And like I said, uh, Tiffany and Company is the dresser set you really want to look out for. That set goes for thousands of dollars, uh, righteously so. Um, Tiffany and Company is, is something that you should, if you're a reseller, know about uh, already. And uh, this kind of thing you're going to mostly find in estate sales and stuff like that. Uh, I want to say we took a best offer for about 300 and something on this set. This is a great set. This was kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass to ship because uh, every single piece I had to wrap up in bubble wrap just, just to be careful, especially the glass pieces. And so uh, kind of a pro tip when you're dealing with these, look at the glass stuff first because sometimes they, become, they come chipped on the, on the rims uh, just from use. Uh, the perfume bottles, the the little glass necks that are inside there tend to break. These ones had a, a broken neck. I think I put two photos. Yeah, see, as you can see here, uh, it's got a broken neck. Those things usually go right into uh, there as a long shaft, and those break all the time. Just If you are shipping them, just make sure that uh, I wouldn't ship them separate. I would put them together, but just like kind of bubble wrap them tight together or tape them together uh it, with it inside there because it's less likely going to break that way when you ship these individually i mean you could technically ship them uh, or not ship them pack them separately and they won't break just for me it's just a lot easier to put it put it in there with it together and then put some tape around it or some bubble around it or even shrink wrap if you have uh, a heat shrink machine to uh, keep that from rattling around or moving because those things tend to break the most so if you're ever looking at these sets see actually the other one's broken too so both of them are broken so if you're ever looking at these sets uh, look for that uh, of course this clock was pretty cool it doesn't work obviously um, it's kind of old it's kind of hard to find something of this age that actually still uh, works for sure uh, we got sir jg what's cracking uh, he says he found a uh, a Tiffany and money a Tiffany and Company money clip. He kept it and used it. Very cool. 
yeah, that, you know, Tiffany and company stuff pops up. You just got to look for it. You know, some, some of the uh, Tiffany and company items are stamped very small and you should have your jewelers loop with you if you're sourcing anyways. Uh, next up, we have this World War I trench periscope. We talked about this before in the past in a previous top 10 video. That's how far we're back. <laughs> That's how far back we are. Uh, I can literally do a what sold on eBay video for like two weeks straight and still have fresh content. And as a matter of fact, I should probably do that, though the YouTube algorithm doesn't like me when I do videos uh, day after day. So I uh, probably won't do that. Maybe I'll do another one Friday. Uh, but anyways, World War I trench periscope. Check out these. Look for them. Uh, some of these have sold as high as $400, especially when they're in uh, pr pristine condition. This one, as a matter of fact, was in great condition. Uh, for those that don't know, a periscope is basically like a, um, it's like a long time binocular telescope that you can stick out of a trench so that you don't get your head blown off. That's pretty much what they're for. It's kind of like a periscope. It, it is a periscope, excuse me, but I meant like a submarine periscope. It's kind of the same effect where... You know, you can stick your head above uh, and see what's going on above you without actually sticking your head out like traditional binoculars or a telescope or something like that. So uh, just take a look out for these. Uh, for the most part, I guess some kind of history on this. You're going to, for the most part, these leather things, uh, of course, are leather, which is organic material, which is going to fall apart over the years. These things usually aren't aren't taken care of, like with saddle lotion or anything like that. So the straps are the things that tend to break the most. So if you can actually find one of these with a pristine leather case, you know, that does definitely add the value to it. And of course, if you're looking at these, make sure that the, the glass isn't broken. This is the top, not broken. And I think I took a picture of the eyepiece right here, which is not broken. So, you know, there's two glass elements here. There's, of course, internal mirrors. Um, and I guess uh, for the most part, those aren't going to be broken unless this thing was dropped like crazy. So I guess look inside the internal mirrors. That's how they. Get, that's how this thing actually works. It's mirrors bouncing light off each other so that you get a funky angle to be able to view. And I think I talked too much about this. Uh, what was nice, it actually had uh, the copyright and all this kind of stuff on here, which uh, definitely helped, you know, pinpoint everything and it's got a serial number and, and a, a model number and all that so that was pretty cool so definitely look out for these kind of things uh they're out there military stuff actually does very well uh, in certain cases uh, we got death piles in the house there's an og youtuber guy right there definitely go and subscribe to death piles uh, he's an awesome guy for sure definitely go and check his channel out uh, next up, we have this Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Module A3. This is a kind of like a little booklet thing. Uh, we've talked about Dungeons & Dragons TSR before in the past. This is a, not a sleeper, Brian. I mean, pretty much a lot of people know about this, but thanks to like the show Stranger Things, uh, Dungeons & Dragons has really kind of been put into the forefront. Again, this was like an old-school 80s role-playing game before there was role-playing games. This is like the OG role-playing game right here. And uh, these little booklets had like a map. And it kind of gave you like a, uh, it's kind of like a, a mission kind of thing. And it has a map. But there's some of these that are worth a pretty good amount of money. And what you're going to do is you just basically search by the title. So this one would be Assault on the Airy of the Slave Lords. Or I don't even know how to say that. Airy, Airy of the Slave Lords. And of course, A3. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the bottom corner there, it says 9041. That's also a thing to look up to. Uh, what's nice a lot about these Dungeons and Dragon books is they're very easy to look up. Um, like I said, the A3, of course, in the top corner, <clears throat> and the title, which is Assault on Airy of the Slave Lords, is the, definitely the. And of course, it says you know, uh, 1981, and that TSR logo that you see in the bottom left corner there. I think you can see that on your end. Let me see. Nope, it's peeking in there. You can't see it. Uh, anyways, that little logo is something uh, you should definitely. Uh, be looking out for uh, for sure and so uh, I think let's see if I can have another thing crack at this no I was gonna say I think I might have another logo of that but definitely look out for Dungeons and Dragons stuff now you're gonna find if you find the pewter figures those are a little bit harder to lock down if they're not in their original boxes so uh, I wish you luck with that if you do find a bunch of loose uh, pewter Dungeons and Dragons figures those are a pain in the ass to figure out what is what if they're not in their original boxes 
Uh, next up, we have this San Diego Comic Con 2019 pin, 50th anniversary. Uh, this was a an enamel pin. <clears throat> this was a chase pin. And I guess uh, when people got their Comic Con tickets in the mail, it actually came in this kind of uh, box that had a, like three or four different pins. And this one was the hard one to find a chaser pin. As a matter of fact, we found this in uh, the um, the recycling bin that we have in our work, which basically, you know, so people come and they pick up stuff that we can't sell in the store and uh, they recycle it or they sell it in uh, other charity shops uh, locally and stuff like that. But anyways, I found this and I was like, oh, why is this, you know, in here? And I looked it up and sure enough, it was like, they were going for like 20 bucks so i was like okay crazy so i sold it we took a best offer for 15 dollars. this sold within hours of uh being listed and uh, like i said i did take a buy it now but uh you know we're going to take a little bit of a deep dive into comic-con stuff for those that don't know you know comic-con stuff is very hot this is the 2019 top things that are sold of course funko leads the pack here with funko stuff funko holds an event during comic-con called funko fun days where you can get limited edition very limited edition uh pop funko pops that are only at this event they're mystery boxes you have to open them to see what they are every guest gets a i think it's a box that has like three of them in there and sometimes you get these fun these freddy ones that are like limited edition to five or ten or something so low and they go for thousands of dollars so it's like you know it's worth it going to those events and every year that event sells out and people get upset that they and get tickets and stuff like that but uh traditionally comic-con things you know they sell very well uh, especially if you get limited edition ones that are very popular and for those that are in reselling you know about this this kind of stuff it's hard to kind of justify you know flying out and getting the tickets and getting a hotel and all that kind of stuff just to try to get limited edition items but if you're out there and you see you know like a comic-con logo on something uh this is what the comic-con logo looks like right here if you see this, uh, I think if, if I can zoom in here. Yeah, that shifty eye Comic-Con. I call it the shifty eye. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a there's a great thing about... Uh, that's like a superhero, I want to say. And I forget which one it is. I think it might be Shazam. But there's, a, there's, a, there's something that goes along with that logo. It's a very iconic uh, logo. But definitely look out for Comic-Con stuff, especially Funko Pops. They go for crazy uh, amounts of money. Uh, we got Perla's Precious in the house. She says good morning. She says loves Comic Con. Uh, we got Tracy Thrifts it. How you doing? We got Jacob Charles, the legendary Jacob Charles. Hello, welcome everyone. Yeah, I went to Comic Con once and I told myself I'd never go there again. It's just a nightmare of humanity. Like I don't like people as it is, and like so when I'm surrounded by like smelly kind of rude people. Yeah, I'm not good. Never mind. Just don't go there if you don't like people. Next up, we have this signed Killing Jesus. Yeah, that's a segue and a half right there. Bill O'Reilly. Uh, the only reason why I'm showing this book is, it, you know, it's like a whatever sale, 15 bucks, whatever. But what I'm saying is uh, look out for books that are signed, especially by semi-celebrities or celebrities. You know, this one happens to be like a, a one that was like kind of a sticker. This this is how lazy this guy is. Well, I mean, it actually is pretty smart. You know, you do a bunch of stickers and then they just put it in the book. But um, uh, we talked about on Instagram yesterday. I found a, a, a Aladdin, Disney Aladdin book that's signed by like seven artists. So that's uncommon here in Southern California. I'm like right next door to Disney Studios. So that kind of stuff's common here. But what I'm saying is the the only reason why I'm showing you guys this is look inside books the first couple pages the index page the page that's blank before the title even the title page you know there's lots of signed books out there that people just pass up like especially stephen king stephen king made millions of books and uh you know there's signed ones out there and you know a signed book could go for you know a stephen king one can go for 60 to 100 bucks so uh, people toss these out all the time you find these at goodwill i found crazy sign stuff at goodwill before because people don't look so uh that's the main thing i'm telling you. I'm, I'm still looking for that walt disney uh signed book i know i'm gonna find it one day i know it i know it because it's here i know it's here somewhere in burbank i gonna find it someone's gonna donate it i'm gonna find it and uh a walt disney signature is between a thousand and two thousand dollars by the way just the signature by itself uh, next up, we have this Kevin Harvick signed helmet. 
This is a replica helmet. We've talked about these ones before. Uh, Kevin Harvick is a fan of the American Cancer Society. He donates stuff uh, pretty frequently to the Bakersfield shop. So if you're in Bakersfield, California, definitely go out to that shop. And that is a super pro tip I'm going to tell you right now. Sourcing at that shop is amazing. We probably get lots of crazy uh, high-end stuff going through that shop. So if you're in Bakersfield, which is about maybe an hour and a half, two hours north of Los Angeles, definitely go and check that out but anyways huge shout out to kevin harvick who donates uh, some signed helmets every once in a while uh we took a best offer for 150 on this one and it's not a real helmet though it's the size of a real helmet as you can see here special edition replica helmet it even says right here collectible replica helmet only not intended to be worn because if you wear this and you die well then you're dead and you shouldn't have worn it because it's a replica helmet it's not for safety as it says right here and it's pretty interesting because uh, there's like a plastic bar that's like mounted in there so that like some idiot that's, you know, been drinking Budweiser's all day doesn't put it on and then thinks he can do a backflip off a, off a two-story building just for, for lols. <laughs> just for the lols. Like, why did you do that? I did it for the lols. Yeah. Uh, we got... <laughs> Oh, good. Uh, we got Kai Shane Bright in the house. Says Comic Con rocks. Thank goodness I live close, but I keep my, but I keep my goodies. Yes, you must live in, you must live close to San Diego, which is where that nightmare hellhole of a <laughs> convention is. Like I said, I mean, I could see the why people like it, but it's not for me. It's not for someone who doesn't, who's like kind of a little bit claustrophobic, just doesn't want to deal. Just a backflip. <laughs> And a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Uh, next up, we have this Flexi Disc German. This is a 1965 vintage. This sold for a whopping, a crazy astronomical price of $9.99. Uh, the only reason why I'm showing you this is uh, some might not know that Flexi Discs exist. And what a Flexi Disc is, is a very thin piece of plastic. It like flexes. It's very thin. It's not like a traditional record that has some kind of hold to it. These things flop around. They're floppies. They're they're like floppy disks, but they're called flexi disks in the world of uh, records. And we're gonna take a deep dive into the flexi disk right now. These are things to look out for. So they're very they're not rare. Some of the rare some also some of the rare runs are rare. It's like duh duh. <laughs> uh, but there are some rare ones out there. And like I said, these are easily you can spot these very easily because they're flimsy, like super flimsy. Uh, let's take a deep dive into this. Uh, we got a Jack White limited edition one that sold for four thousand two hundred dollars, but that's not really kind of the price that the those are going for. It looks like they actually that same person might have tried to sell that one like three or four times before they actually got a price. That one's probably going for about thousand dollars, eight hundred dollars. But the Beatles were known to do flexi discs that, that are very hard to find. So uh, if you ever see uh, Beatles ones, definitely buy them. As we can see here, this one went for four hundred and uh, 40 something dollars and and there's some other definitely ones but always look up flexi discs because um they're kind of rare in themselves but some of them are actually worth a crazy amount of money see there's like a madonna one uh where did that madonna one go i don't know i don't know who attributed uh the beatles ones for sure uh, look at see here hey jude went for 415 dollars uh, there's an Andy Warhol one. That's pretty cool. I have never seen that one before. $450. So it's definitely something to uh, look up for, for that for sure. Uh, Jacob Charles says, I never heard of a flexi disc before. Learn something new every day. Yes, flexi discs are uh, something that is not really talked about too much on YouTube. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've seen anyone talk about flexi discs in the reseller community. Though uh, when I did when I did find these at first, I did a... A deep dive myself if you go to youtube and you and you click flexi discs there's lots of great uh channels that are dedicated to talking about flexi discs the medium uh and different kind of uh kind of not ones that are valuable but there's like a mcdonald's one that's very interesting uh i think it's a mcdonald's one where uh if you you played the mcdonald's one and if it played a certain song or it, or if the song didn't get interrupted you won like a million dollars or something so most, pretty much all of them are the ones that are the songs that get interrupted. And for that, sure. Uh, Sir G Jace G says you used to be able to get them in magazines. Yeah, I totally believe that because there's that they're that thin. Uh, National Geographic was one very interesting. I want to see if uh, I never knew that for sure. So Sir G 
Sergey G, Sergey G, Sergey G, Sergey G. Ah, if you enjoyed this program, definitely click the like button. I appreciate everyone that's came here, especially on a day like today. Uh, it is Wednesday. It is hump day. So get your hump on. Once again, I am Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell for notifications. Click the like button. And thank you to all the Patreons. We're going to have a new Patreon uh, Know Your Stuff video coming out today. So uh, I really appreciate the new Patreons. We almost have 10 Patreons. Uh, I think we're like three shy. And uh, for those who don't know, I just started a Patreon uh, last month. And uh, I'm doing exclusive content there because YouTube algorithm sucks. And so I need to, I need to do something else and... Uh, it's just me kind of, you help, help me, help you, help me, help you. Something like that. Anyways, I'm Chris Thurshaw Pussler. We'll see you next time. Take care.